<laughs> Live recording from SoundCloud, Zeph Daniel. This is the uh, temporary home of the Zeph Report while away. And um, it is a live recording, which makes it kind of exciting. In other words, there's... Not that it will sound any different to you, because I never really edit the, the recordings. I, I just let them go raw. And so, here we are. Praise God. And uh, we've... The last episode really focused in the beginning on this miracle of having... And, and, and uh, 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 the person that had the um, broken ankle with the bone... <clears throat> protruding out um, that God miraculously healed by reversing time and space to have a different uh, event. I've seen him do that before, so that's how I knew that I would have that in mind, or he put it on my mind to, to, to expect something like that. And then we, we both, we all expected something like that. And eventually, that is exactly what happened. And I'm still kind of Amazed, proving that one doesn't have to get all angsty about prayer or make a big show of it, as some people do. Uh, a simple conversation with the Lord uh, is all that was required. A, a quiet prayer, Lord, please, you know, in a normal tone of voice, got the greatest, one of the greatest results I've ever seen. There's been a few times where something really huge has happened. A few, I, I would, I, you know, I'm not catching all the little things, all the little, you know, protections and um, provisions and, and all kinds of, you know, wonderful miracles that happen on a daily basis. But in terms of uh, healing, uh, this was on the same level, say, of raising the dead. It would be on, you know, pretty much, not that I'm looking around for dead people to raise, but it's pretty much, you know, a, a mind blower in that way. Uh, first, there's a, a broken ankle, and uh, then it never, the, you know, with bone protruding, I mean, visible to all, all the way across the ankle, um, you know, broken, and with all the symptoms of a break. And I think the, uh, the person, uh, our sister Angie, she, it was her ankle, she put on underneath my Facebook page her testimony of what happened and the proof of just how serious it was and, and the medical proof as to exactly what occurred there. And uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, again, recognizing that a normal prayer uh, in a normal tone of voice, in a conversational voice with the Lord, and just on the way to this or that or something else and in the midst of the crisis, uh, without having to... To, to, to insert ourselves into the equation. See, this is the thing that keeps uh, coming back to me on this. Without having to insert ourselves into the equation as being the prayer movers, uh, i.e. A, a simple request and, and a powerful answer that was done by God alone and not by us doing cartwheels or acrobatics which I've seen so many people do. Oh, we need to go to this guy to pray for us. And then he goes into these contortions. And then, and then you know, that we think the prayer is going to be answered then because of all the acrobatics and athletic skill displayed in the prayer rather than a simple conversation with God. The simple conversation with God has always netted the big results. And I have never really seen um, acrobatic or athletic or, 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 or talented prayer um, pay off the way people expect it to, but I have seen the quiet um, pushing into God and almost like, you know, desperate plea, you know, Lord, please, and whimpering and quiet and needing help. And uh, those prayers I've seen answered and I've seen miracles. But the more athletic ones, the more look at me, look at me, look at what I'm doing. Uh, let's go to this guy to pray rather than yourselves ourselves, uh, never has seemed to yield the result intended. It was like, yeah, we expect the result because we really got a fervent prayer going. And, uh, you know, fervency doesn't need to be loud. It doesn't need to, to attract attention. Um, doesn't need to be a, 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 you know, a big display for other people to gawk at. 
uh, just in the means of the in the in the way of of the time of you know in the midst of the crisis as we're moving forward. Um, simple quiet prayer, simple quiet intention. I suppose there's nothing I could do to have uh, encouraged the result. In other words, um, I could not. Um, being louder, being softer, uh, or any variation would not necessarily have netted me the same result. So, uh, maybe it's a lesson. I mean, maybe that'll help you in a way. I, I don't know. I just know that uh, I'm grateful to the Lord for, for everything, including taking life's hurts and, and turning them into uh, either a positive or negating them altogether. And, you know, yes, we are here and we do suffer uh, as humans on the planet and there's all kinds of conflicts and wars and um, I, yesterday I was a bit miffed at remembering this power trip this guy was on and trying to get control of me and, and I guess or anybody who would listen by claiming to be a prophet. And I don't think anything exacer exasperates me more than seeing that kind of, uh, well, just demagoguery in the name of Jesus, uh, as if this guy is something special, as if a person, a man, a woman, is something, oh, let's go to her, that's something special, let's go to him, that's something special. So now that I'm looking at that, and I had, couldn't let it go, because you see, the whole church system, and as I'm watching the uh, the Catholics and their rituals to choose a pope, and I'm watching, which basically to me is a three-ring circus, it's, all, it's pathetic, it's absolutely unwatchable, you know, not that we have a, a camera on the whole thing, but you know, as the news reports come in, I'm, I'm looking at it and, and, and almost in horror as to what, how pompous and arrogant um, these people can be to think that somehow, I, I just kept thinking, what would Jesus think of this if he were here today? And what would he think of the Vatican, for example? And what would he think of um, this whole notion of, of campaigning for Pope? You know, what is it, Africa versus Europe or so, whatever it is. I, I just think that... Um, he would do the same thing that he did to the scribes and Pharisees and call them a bunch of hypocrites and liars and children of the devil and walk away. And, and, or he would denounce the whole thing and, and uh, you know, he would call the church publicly invalid and say that it's got nothing to do with him and there is no relationship there and walk away. That doesn't mean that there aren't believers who are in the Catholic system that are having a relationship with the Lord, but it's an individual thing. It's not something that could be... Uh, you know, this is all going to 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 a witnessing America. Were we cast out? Was I cast out because I was not a member of the Catholic Church? Was I was I denied by my God that I recognize on a daily basis as being the only reason I'm here? I mean, I'm, I have a lot of gratitude because. I realize on a daily basis that I wouldn't be here without him and I wouldn't be able to function without him and I wouldn't have anything without him. So therefore, you know, that's my consciousness daily. You know, it's, it's, um, and as I've grown in that consciousness, you know, meaning it's him, not me, uh, I've, the, there've been blessings, but was I denied in the, in the, in the simple prayer request? In my simple speaking to the Lord and, and about all kinds of things on a daily basis, I was like, should I do this? And, oh, you know, Lord, I'm feeling like I should change this or change that or maybe I should do this or maybe I should do that or what do you think of this or what do you think of that? I think he likes being brought in on the process, don't you? I mean, would it be pathetic if I had to go find a priest and talk these concerns over so that he could then exert authority over me and control my thoughts wouldn't that be a tragedy, folks? So the same thing about the guy calling himself prophet, you know, that, you know, if you think, if you think there's a guy that's a prophet, you need to sit at his feet. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Can you imagine 
what Jesus would think of this, of, 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 of a person with that kind of self-importance, that kind of ego trip, can you imagine what he would say? I think it would be painful to hear. I wouldn't want to, you know, and not that I'm exempt from such shenanigans. I, I know I'm not. I'm, I, I hope the Lord doesn't let me go off with, you know, I asked him, don't let me put up a bad word. And I realized I did one a couple of days ago that I said a couple of things that probably weren't exactly is accurate. I would have to clarify them later. So that word didn't go up. And so I'm grateful to the Lord. Yesterday's did. And I did do my scribes and Pharisees rant in the middle of it. But it's the same thing. I don't think anything exasperated Jesus as much. Who is God? As much as the temple. Right? That's where he went off. <laughs> Both when he was reading the word and reading Isaiah, and, and then they, they threw him out, and he had to, he had, and he had to go, go into invisible mode to get away from him because they were going to throw him off the cliff or something because he proclaimed to be the Son of God. You know, He proclaimed himself to be the Messiah and applied the scriptures to himself and uh, applied the Isaiah predictions of the Messiah to himself. And, you know, and of course they didn't recognize him that... If if you see the Messiah kill him, the first thing that anyone would do, the, the of of uh, in Judaism, the the established Juda Judaic religion, um, they they pine and wait for their Elijah to return and their Messiah to return, because they want to kill him afresh. I, that's what the the religious establishment would do. So who's their daddy? Obviously, the devil. Way back then, who's the daddy of uh, the church system? Same thing. What do they want to do? They want to get control of your mind. Oh, gee, who wants to do that? They want to get control of your mind. They want to get control of your soul. They want to put you in a little compartment. They want you to think a certain way. They want you to behave a certain way. And they want to sit there in judgment of you like they're playing God on a daily basis and even come into your home and give you counseling with your wife and your kids. And when all of this God wants to do they want to take the place of God in doing that in your life. And I suppose that's the root and nub. Yes, today we're talking about the church system because the Lord woke me up and, he, and, he, and he's not going to let it go, folks. This disturbs God the most. Is And when I see, I, I see a guy like Kirk Cameron and he's selling the Geneva Bible. The, 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 they've done a reprint of the Geneva Bible at, uh, I think, GenevaBible.com. It sounds like a great Bible to have. Uh, you know, it predates the King James, obviously. And um, it, it, it may be the truest one there is, and I'm going to have to check it out. I need to get one on the uh, iPad or some app if they have it. But I wouldn't mind having a real one. Uh you know, so he, 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 you know, he was, I recognized the background. He was in Malibu. That's where it was filmed. So here he is in Malibu, <laughs> the heart of the beast. And nobody knows this. He's by the ocean, and it just looks like he's by the ocean. But me, I grew up there. So, I mean, obviously, there he is in Malibu. And uh, and he looks fine. And, and he's, you know, people, I've, I hear them say, my pastor this and my pastor that. No, he looked fine. He looks like a fine, um, you know, he's getting older now. He's not exactly a young man anymore. He's coming into middle age. But, I mean, he's an actor that does Christian projects, and, and he was in the Left Behind series. And, um, you know, he's a visible Christian and advocates the church system. And that one point, that one nubbing point, and that, that take on um, the rapture that he has, which he believes, you know, he, he will be raptured as the Left Behind series was all about the rapture. And it's very, it's very commercial extianity. And um, triple extianity. Maybe that's more like pornography. Anyway, so the bottom line is, uh, there he was in Malibu. And I'm just thinking, I wonder how much money it costs to, to do this promo. And... It's almost like there's two systems. There's like this Christian subgroup thing, which is well financed because you know religion has got the money, right? And doing a, a this big time commercial, and as much as I like the idea of having my own Geneva Bible, and I had no problem with the content of the commercial. Trust me, I had no problem with his delivery. He he seemed just fine and very earnest and true. I mean, there's nothing about it <clears throat> had any guile about it. There was nothing evil. 
There was no evil symbolism to look at. There was nothing wrong. Not that I could see anyway, other than, you know, it was Malibu, and I just thought, okay. Um, probably because <clears throat> that image of the ocean, just like I have the, the ocean here, and I've actually had to shut the door to not have the sound of the waves coming in because I just I decided I didn't want waves on this recording. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, I've got sound effects of waves and I've, I've recorded the waves here and I'll use them another time. But look, so we have this system and of course this is Christmas and, you know, um, Easter and, uh, you know, and then you have, and, and, and Kirk Cameron represents the uh, Protestant evangelical wing of Christianity and then, of course, the Catholic over here have the Catholic aspect, and you know, and you, there's the whole sad history of the church inherent in it. But I just think, and and you know, you you'll just have to take this to, to the Lord. But I think submission to any church body is a surrender of one's soul to man rather than God. I because. The corruption is so deep, and as a friend said, it's a thousand times worse than anything I've ever described on the Zeph report. So that must be pretty bad. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, we've had uh, satanic ritual abuse victims who were abused in church by by famous pastors and things like that. And we've interviewed them. And was there ever a whimper from anyone? Did did it ever make news? Did anyone ever follow up on the claims? Uh, that uh, uh, one of my guests in particular was making. Was there any follow-up? Did the FBI get involved and say, well, this should be investigated because there could be some dead bodies that need to be dealt with? I mean, did anyone take seriously? Did Geraldo show up uh, wanting to do a, a story about this? Uh, no, Geraldo had put the issue to bed a long time ago that, you know, if there is something like satanic ritual abuse and Satanism going on uh, in the name of Jesus or whatever, uh, Th that uh, it must be very rare. And it, of course it wouldn't be in your church, you know, that's in, you know, Boise, Idaho on the corner building there, that it's not going to be going on in there. So obviously, you know, this is a mistaken topic. And obviously, and, and what I'm saying is basically, well, you're missing it because the thing that's going on is just the same thing that goes on in the world. It's hidden in plain sight. You know, people have, uh, in, 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 you know, in the privacy of their own homes or whatever, they can do whatever kind of evil thing they want, you know? And, and uh, if, they, if, if there is uh, missing people or bodies or whatever that's covered up, and, you know, uh, then it's covered up. And there's a lot of things that we don't know because they are covered up or they are smoothed over or whatever, you know, the, the, the honchos of this society and the heads of the media and all these people realize that <clears throat> they wouldn't have any, that their system is built on the, the opposite of goodness, obviously, and, they, and they, are, they can't be there unless they keep it quiet. So you have all the institutions of man, all the powers of man covering all this stuff up on a daily basis and and then you bring out a Geraldo who who's looking for where's the evidence of the satanic abuse of the in in families and churches or generational Satanism where where is that and he can't find he goes, there's a witness over here there's a witness over there and um, in a sense he's being used then as part of the cover up because it, it the, what the message of Geraldo doing his big cutting edge interview to uh, someone that was abused by Satanist basically is showing the audience, whoever the audience is, that it's so rare and so, you know, it affects so few people that it, that certainly it almost doesn't exist. It's just, you know, a few people here, a few people there, but you can't really ever put your finger on it. And so the issue is then closed. And then, you know, in a couple of years, there'll be someone complaining about it or someone getting public. And, and you know, and another example of this was uh, you had you know, Bryce Taylor's book, making claims about big time celebrities and making some serious claims and, and speaking with a lot of detail, a lot of detail about Southern California high society. And I looked at it and I was like, yep, all these little details are showing me that, you know, she's being serious. She was not lying. Okay. And, um, 
she wasn't making anything up. And the stories were so outlandish that, that, uh, so outlandish that it was like, well, you can't make this stuff up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the idea of dolphin porn, who ever heard of that? And, and other things, uh, involving celebrities doing porno films and, uh, having the second tier sort of, now, what I understand is that, you know, from having seen it, that these pedophile, you know, and Satanists, satanic pedophile networks, they are, um, you know, affect all the pillars of society, and it's all a nod, nod, wink, wink, hush, hush thing, but they say, well, who could cover it up? Well, the look, if the people involved who belong to the devil own the media and own law enforcement and own the military and own everything... Then obviously, and if you're talking about the powers and principalities of supernatural nature that control things on this earth, then institutions would necessarily reflect that reality. That it's the world, it's the, the, the norm, it's the it's ubiquitous. So when I see somebody and, and no, and I don't have to dwell on it. I just ask the Lord to keep guiding me through and I don't want to really have anything to do with people that are involved in things like that and and or or so therefore I won't have anything to do with um the music industry let's say you know or the broadcasting industry because I'm I'm not going to you know bow down to the temporary god I'm just and not only that I just have almost there was a guy a big time christian guy He's out there. Oh, you know, you all listen to him. You all get his blog or whatever he does. I don't know what he does. I think he broadcasts. But you, will, a lot of you, not you all, but I mean, you know, I'll try not to have hyperbole here. But it's kind of difficult knowing me. Anyway, you guys, a lot of you, will listen, listen to these alternative Christians. And I, I see you promoting this one and that one and uh, on your page or through email. And... um I'm like, don't they know? You mean those people don't know? that? that and let's go down the list. Is there anyone out there that I can recommend? Um, well, there may be a few very obscure people, but is there anyone really out there that's kind of there that you, know, that you guys promote that is okay? And the answer is no. Um, they're all hypocrites, and, and uh, they ought to all shut up. There's a few, you know, and I got friends out there, I know, and I know them, but, but I'm talking about, you know, is there anyone out there? See, you don't realize that the people out there who are promoting themselves in the name of Jesus, which, of course, then you've got to have a red flag with that, but the ones you think are okay and the ones I see people touting as... Um, yeah, save for a few. There's a few that are, you know, bless their souls, they're, they're pure hearts, and they're just kind of trying to, you know, put their information out, and, and they're doing it, and, and they're doing it on YouTube, and they're doing it, and they're fine, you know, they're, 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 they're never going to have a name, really, they're just another talking head that is there for five minutes, and then, you know, they, they do their bit, and they're, and they're, you know, probably helping people, and I'm, I in no way want to stop anyone from speaking, but you, you, there are people, there's an organized system of alternative, um, I guess it would be evangelical style Christianity or Protestant Christianity online that uh, mainly deals with conspiracy theory as we've been talking about over and over. And the Lord wanted me to talk about it again today, so I can't, I'm sorry, you know, to be a broken record here. But that these people need to be, um, you know, to have their... Uh, tables overturned, to have their money changer tables overturned. They're, um, you know, they're, it's, it's hard to watch these carnival barkers, but I mean, you, a, a lot of you are so gullible and have no discernment and you just buy it because you, and you don't realize that a lot of these guys came out of the church system and they're just like stealth churchianity people and, and they want one thing, control of you and they want your money. And um, because they're giving any, they've they've promoted themselves as being alternatives to church. 
but are doing a form and likeness of it, and more and more through conferences and different things. And, you know, they have their appearances on the radio, and they think they're spreading the gospel of Jesus by going on late-night radio and um, talking about the Nephilim and Satanism and all that. And I'm here to tell you they're, they're here to cover up Satanism because that's their, in the end of the day, the net result of their ministries, which has got to be put in quotes, is to um, obscure the satanic. Is to, um, is to, they will never admit it's the world and that they had to bow down in order to even, I guess, walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. And so there you are. I, I, there's nothing more I can say about it. I've, I've just, you know, I, it, it, I think the thing that irks the Lord the most is when Jesus' name is invoked to spread disinformation, to obscure the, the hurting of the children of, in, in satanic SRA, satanic ritual abuse, or in pedophilia, and, or various power trips where you get control of someone and, and elicit something from them, and that it's covered up by the community, and that starts becoming a, a satanic cult right there. You know, whenever you're covering up any kind of criminality and things like that, and when a group does it, when a church does it, well, it's, I guess you could call that Satanism in a sense. But um, I have a very low expectation for, of mankind. I believe that, that, that if left alone, and if no one's looking, that man will do the wrong thing. I believe that if there's a temptation there, i.e. power, uh, being the head of a... I don't believe that any man can be the head of a church because I don't believe that... because that, that kind of power corrupts. And I don't believe any of us are strong enough to withstand that kind of power trip. I mean, you could be the head of a, a kingdom, I suppose, but most... like, look at the head of ours now, of our uh, nation. I mean, it's a... It's, it, the, the whole system is just about as corrupt a thing as such a filthy thing as I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's, I, I just keep thinking, do the people know that they're lied to on a daily basis and that there is no government representing them? Do they, do they know how bad it is? Do they realize that if they, that the reason it's like that is because they've all gone silent and they don't vote because that's they're above it because they're with Jesus, and that 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 the church did the same thing with uh, throughout history, getting people not to participate in the system because Jesus is coming, and you know, uh, as if God is not involved in the political process or the, all the processes of the military or the wars or whatever, as if God is somehow separate and above it all, and we just need to go up there above the clouds with Him, and we're all said these are the same people that wait around to be raptured, the same people that are that are mucking up the entire walk in Christ, mucking it up and, and again, okay, I got to calm down. They wouldn't be there doing what they do unless you gave them power to be there and do what they do. So I'd think about that. Uh, no, I can't recommend... Look, there, from time to time, I'll look at a YouTube and there'll be a young man on there or a young woman and giving a testimony or something. I think that's great. That's, that's you know, amateur stuff. No one trying to be a professional about it. But to, using the social media and social networks to convey a message, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. And there's, a, you know, the occasional preacher that's preaching a pure word and, you know, maybe his life is a mess, but it's, a pure, it's like mine. I preach a, a pretty pure word on occasion and my life is, you know, I'm just not perfect and I'm sorry. I'm just not as good as I would like to be. And certainly I, um, you know, I have get angry and cuss and do things. like I, I don't know. I, I it's, it's not a pretty picture, but... You know, uh, sometimes the Lord will use me to have a good word. And, and yes, he'll, he can use them. I, I agree, he can use them. Uh, the, the dividing line, the dividing line, friends, is whether or not, the dividing line is whether or not they are 
I suppose, in a sense, trying to get control of you, control of your pocketbooks, control of your minds, and in some way boxing in the information that you're receiving to be something that serves them and that they themselves are still not free. Though they claim freedom in Jesus Christ, they're still not free of the satanic hierarchy, yet pose as, you know, your pastor. They'll just say they're a pastor and then they expect to be your pastor. They'll put on a, you know, a show, a tent revival, a conference, whatever, so that they can, you know, get control of you or tell you information that you don't know about how the demonic is going to come get you if you do any bad things. And then they're going to want to know about what bad things that you've done. And then they're going to be the arbiter of your um, absolution. You know, they will pose as a vessel for Jesus to uh, help you to forgive. And you'll go and ask advice and you'll say that, does this mean I'm possessed if I have this and this and this happening? And before you know it, you'll be telling them your life story, and then they'll get con. Then the con game goes on. They get con. They have confidence over you, and they have now information to use against you, and information they can blackmail you with. And uh, so, because of those uh, threats, you, you know, will uh, just be like a trained monkey and do what you're told. I guess. I mean, unfortunately, that's so that these pastors and ministers and purveyors of religion really are a bait-and-switch operation for, um, for their own egos. I mean, they're basically going on their own power trip, and, and they're all like mini-popes, you know? They're all like mini-pontiffs. And they couldn't be that unless you were conned. You being conned is what they count on so that you will buy the tickets to their um, sideshow, and you'll go to the uh, to the to the uh, you, you know to whatever it is they're putting on, and you'll uh, you, and I'm not no, I'm not even I'm not talking about you know people that have deliverance ministries or anything like that that where there's a function of people hurting and you know I'm not you know I'm it's it's a mixed bag, but can't we just try and not be tools of Satan for once? I mean, is there any way we can do that? Or are, are we just hopeless as humans, so conflicted within that we can't seem that we're going to have to have one leg with the devil and one leg with God and then, and then put our... And then, but then any one of us that speaks, if that's the case, I mean, if it's really that bad, that any one of us that speaks is already compromised and so wouldn't be like John the Baptist, wouldn't be like the early church, wouldn't be like Paul after his conversion... In other words, it, you'd be like Paul before the conversion, who's touting all these platitudes, or like the scribes and the Pharisees. Isn't there any way? Did Kirk Cameron have to be in Malibu of all places? Because it's close to his house, I'll bet. <laughs> no, we lived in Malibu, and um, you know, for about I guess about a year, lived up on the cliff above Zuma Beach, and a it was kind of an old house, but it was really the location was just amazing and uh and you know so I got a chance to go through the storm I used to love the storms it's most one of the most beautiful uh areas uh in the world it's it's absolutely lovely and I love beauty that's why I'm always attracted to beautiful places because I just love beauty I love beauty uh I'm just you know I'm kind of like I'm just blown away by beauty you know so it's always like beautiful houses, beautiful settings, you know. Um, uh, I've, you know, love beautiful people. All kinds of, you know, I just beauty. I love animals, <laughs> you know. Um, so, you know, it's very desirable. I can understand anyone wanting to live in Malibu because it's just like, you know, the ocean and the sun, the sand, the perfect climate. And and then you go down to the restaurants and um, and to the shops and then you see the hierarchy, yes. And it just gets to be, it's a small town, so there's all kinds of gossip and stuff. And it's just like, uh, okay, um, if you're not going to play the game here. And, and I felt like we were just sort of booted out, you know what I mean? It was just getting to be, 
that, you know, people just walk up to you over on the street and go, oh, you're one of them, huh? Oh, another one, huh? You know, just weird stuff like that. And, you know, weird. And I'm like, what are you talking about, you know, at that time? Or, or there would just be organized uh, anger because they want everyone in Malibu has to be, uh, it would seem, especially the Vineyard Church and these other, you know, that 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 house the you know the, the the do their churchianity thing, they all have to be um, with the devil in some way, or ranked in some way in the hierarchy. You could call yourself an atheist and not talk about it in terms of God or the devil. And just say t- that, but but people walking around free is intolerable. In a small town, you know they they said oh you know they, they, you just get labeled a weirdo if that's if you're gonna you know not kowtow to to something or someone. Uh, in your community, and I don't know, you know, wh- whether it's because people are very insecure, they can't stand on their own two feet, they don't want to do the right thing, they think somehow that an affiliation with the blood letters is going to make their children uh, a better life because they can maybe get into a better school, but actually the karmic debt that they owe is the death of their children and they don't realize they've killed their children and then they wonder why their children commit suicide. They go, oh, he had everything going for him. I mean, we really sacrificed, <laughs> you know, meaning, you know, they, they sold out, you know, all for the kids and then the kids hit the wall because karmically you reap what you sow. You sell out for the kids, you're going to kill your kids. But I can't explain this. Do you think I could put a pulpit in Malibu and you think that, uh, you know, Mel Gibson's going to come invite me to speak, and he put a church there. He he loves the Lord. He's in the Catholic way, but he's got his own church. So I guess that's how he gets around the uh, the problem with anything else. But so no, um, no the 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 idea that somehow the system would be supported because Jesus separates one from the system, puts one on the narrow path i.e. takes you off the wide path, puts you on the narrow path. And somehow that's so weird, a concept to Christians, that I, and and, and, I mean, they talk about it, but they think the, the way they speak about it, the ones I've heard, is they, they, they equate the wide path with the narrow path. So the the narrow path is down the wide path, and and all these millions of people are on it. So no worries. Just so, so keep John the Baptist out, keep Elijah out, keep anybody like that, and by all means keep Jesus out, and then we got ourselves a good Jesus church here. And it's just, isn't it late in the game? I mean, the society's falling apart and everything. I mean, uh, the karmic situation, right? Because karma is the law of the land. You will re- reap what you sow, in other words. That's what, karma is just easier to say. I know it's an Eastern term, but it's the same concept in the East, you know, that the Hindus and Buddhists all believe that, that you will reap what you sow. So do good, you know, Buddhists say, you know, do good, if you want a good effect, do good causes. That's, you hear Buddhists talking a lot about doing causes. You know, if you do a good cause, you get a good effect and try not to hurt anybody. You know, try not to hurt anybody. The reason this is all being mentioned today is, and we keep exploring it, I know it's like beating my head against the wall. I know it's futile, but the Lord wants it, so I'm doing the best I can, and I'm sorry if it's, if it's we can't, okay, the other, okay, yes. And we're not going to solve it here on this podcast, or broadcast, or whatever it is. We're not going to solve it today. You're going to keep, and I suppose we, is the better way to put this and, and everything just if I've ever said you just consider me to have misspoken I should say we we are going to keep promoting alternative Christianity because they talk about conspiracy theory so we're going to keep doing that we're going to keep listening to late night radio we're going to keep thinking you know but but I just never ever think that somehow you're in something you know, to me, it's just another talking head. Like I could listen to Geraldo, and then I could listen to Pastor Joe, who says, uh, "Here I'm Pastor Joe or Bob or whatever." And if I turn him on on the religious station, there's Pastor So and So, 
maybe he says a couple good things. He's re- reciting one of the Psalms or something, and I'm tuned in. Then I flip to another station. There's the sports broadcaster. I tune to another station. There's the used car salesman. I turn to another station. There's the the ball game. And okay, fine. All I see all of them as equal. And and the same. I rest my case. And then now you're going to just have to rely on my vision. But I don't see any differentiation between, you know, the ball player, the sports announcer, the pastor, the cook, um, the hedonist out on uh, Barbados uh, semi-nude sunbathing, let's say. I don't see any difference in any of them. Um, you know, I, I suppose we're in a human tragedy called split. So we have a kind of a collective split personality. And what ends up happening is we project the evil onto the other group. You know, it's over there. It's, but the conflict's within us. That's why we can't solve it. And, and there's nothing I can do about my own situation, which is... Um, I I feel beholden to the Lord, but I, you know, and and I don't really consider myself a quote lone ranger Christian, which was a term that 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 uh, shittyanity came up with, in order to um, to 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 vilify or demonize people that are actually walking the walk, because it's a lonely walk if you're if you're you know you, you we share our faith uh, we you, well I don't feel it's lonely because I feel connected to my brothers and sisters globally. And whenever we encounter each other, we share. But, I mean, it's not like we get together every week, you know. It's like there was uh, that, that whole miracle that happened the last few days, and then we go on and have other fellowship here and there. And that's just the way God does church. So, yes, I do believe that church is anything but what's called church. I suppose we've got to maybe stipulate that and and I'm sick and tired of hearing oh there's an exception over here and you know what then they never follow through I never really get to the bottom of it because the pastors really aren't uh interested in talking to me and they never really do I you know you hear oh there's one over there oh really and no sooner do you hear that, they, they're afraid because, um, you know, all I have to f- ask is, are you a 501c3 corporation? And do you make a living from the church? And if the answer is yes, I make a living from the church, then I walk away. You know, we're not here to have, uh, it's hard enough without having to have the pastor dependent on the congregation for money. I mean, that's the fastest way to a corrupt message that there is. So there's no point in going to a thing called church unless you're just lonely and want to be occupied. I'd rather go, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to a movie. I always have, feel a sense of, uh, uh, you know, kind of a collective thing. You know, you're in the movie theater with other people watching a movie and there's kind of a shared experience there. And then, and then that way, you know, they're not charging you on the way. You know, you pay for that one ticket going in. You pay ahead of time, and uh, they're trying to sell you the movie. You want to go to the movie. It's a fair transaction, and uh, hallelujah. <laughs> God be praised. If I get something out of the movie, I usually do get something uh, out of a movie. I get something out of just about every experience that I'm involved in. But I, you know, um, again, humanity is split. And so what do we have to do to have a church? We have to minimize the temptation to corruption, number one. There should be a rule. I know, here we go. I'm, I'm speaking rule, but I might as well just speak my mind here. That, you know, that's what you uh, pay me the big bucks for. So here I am. Uh, trying to avoid hypocrisy if I can. But it's pretty hard. <laughs> but here you go. We should... Avoid making a living from religion. Numero uno. And it's so tempting to, to get, you know, um, if there's a trade that can be plied or whatever, um, hallelujah, if there's a job someone can have that they can do all other than, quote, church or ministry, then they should do that. If they have another source of income besides 
Um, so they don't need it from the people that they're trying to reach or, or share the word with or pastor to or whatever, uh, all the better. If there's some other means, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, investments, uh, whether it's, I don't know what it would be. It doesn't matter really what it is, just so it's not coming from the people, you know. Uh, it could be a, a job at uh, flipping burgers. Uh, it could be a job as a janitor. It could be a job as a CEO. It could be a, any kind of job. Just so you're not asking them, you know, you're not passing the plate around. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's look, if there's a drive to, to raise money to clothe the homeless who are cold or something and you pass the plate around to put a pot together to go buy some jackets and distribute them, that's one thing. But see, as long as there's nobody, it, it, as long as that's not sustaining the, quote, church. So how many congregations would still be there if that rule was enforced, if that rule was enforced, there would be, uh, I can tell you right now, we can just save you the trouble. There wouldn't be any congregations in the traditional sense and churches with steeples on them and little gardens and stained glass windows. There wouldn't be anything like that. It would just be, you know, um, like the early church. People, people getting together out in, the, yeah, out in the pastures and the fields and the places of work and it would just be going on everywhere but it wouldn't be going on centrally located with a power structure what corrupted the Catholic Church was money and the devil you know we can't get a listen I can't get away from the devil you can't get away from the devil because it's in our DNA it's you know, it's it's in our fabric God has to deliver us at a bunch of levels to eternity he he you know, the, he, he he has to bring us from corruption to incorruption. But the corruption, of, you know, it's not just that you were bad and you did a bad thing or you lied or something. It's not that. It's that our very beingness has been corrupted. And um, that corrupt seed, if you will, will go to dust, if not for the Lord to do something with it. Because, and nobody, um, nobody can, uh, no one can really avoid his or her own corruption. When we look in the mirror, we understand there's something wrong. Inside of me, I know I have good and bad. Inside of me, I have light and dark at war with each other. I have, on the one hand, the devil saying, if you come over to my side, it's going to be easy for you, as if he can fix this conflict. He, he created it, you know? And, and, and the Lord says, you come, come with me and, uh, and, and, and live in, in, and you will have you know, eternal life. But, of course, you know, you'll be just like in Corinthians yesterday. And you know what? I don't have my... The iPad had the Bible on it. I'm going to go over these scriptures again, but we'll do that next time. So, rule number one, no, no body, no past. This, this whole thing of even online radio and, and, and as, a, as, a, as a ministry, quote-unquote, this whole structure of getting money for the ministry is, um, will never work and uh, should be rejected. So if you're going to a, a, a church or you have a fellowship where there, there's a central command and control structure, it'll be run by Jezebel in every case because if they're going to collect money, even if they're not, they don't have to be 501c3 to, to exert demagogue level control over you to where they're just going to tell you what to think and what to do and they want your money as well and they just want power and control. The best way is to get your purse strings and bring your whole family and They'll control you all for generations. That's generational abuse. So how are you going to get out of that? Okay, number one, if the, all these the divinity schools and all that train pastors to go out in the field and they make a salary from doing that, they shouldn't. No, I'm not saying it can be changed. I'm just saying if you, you know, before you lose the con game where you're conned, you know, when people want something from you, it's kind of a con game. So they want you to donate so they can stay on YouTube. What? 
They are doing important work for the Lord, so they want you to donate to them to keep them going. I used to ask for donations, and it all went to the bandwidth issue, and it never paid for it, and I never did it never did put food on my table. So I guess I got off a little bit scot-free and I never really needed it anyway. So I suppose in a way I, 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 I kind of, and then I took the donation button off of there because I realized there was a conflict of interest. It took me a long time to realize that, though, like about 10 years. Wish I had heard this broadcast right now that I'm saying back then because I would have dealt with it, you know. I, you, you can't take money from the people that you're preaching to. Or sharing with the word, I, no one likes the word preach anymore. Sharing the word with, or teaching. You don't want to, you go, oh, I'm a, like Gene Scott, his angle was, well, I'm just teaching, but it was all about, but it was all, he was invoking God, and he was on a power trip. And he was getting money from people. And he wouldn't even talk unless you gave him money. He was totally corrupt. I said, like, you can't see this guy's totally corrupt? Excuse him, moi You think he walks with the Lord? He takes, he, he drinks, $500 bottles of wine on your dime and then he just sets half the wine and he just walks away from it because he's got so much money it doesn't even matter what he eats or what he drinks. He became a multimillionaire off the congregation then he just then he just stayed on his little power trip indefinitely. And there's still dupes that will go for that. Well, they're, you know, look at the Catholic Church, how wealthy it is. And just the level of of almost comedy that, that exists there in terms of picking this pope. I, it's it's look it's it's sad to watch it. It's sad to see. I can see Jesus and what he would do, and I'm I'm like oh my God, he would tell all the priests, and all the cardinals, and all the bishops, and all the king's men and whatever to go home. Go get a real job, and then if you want to share me my word whatever, go ahead and do it. Or be a bum. It doesn't matter. Look, the point is, just don't get money for religion. So that's number one. If they get money for, from religion, then uh, if they need you to donate to their ministry, oh, well, there's, yeah, I know, there's the book angle. Um, I, I got nothing wrong with the book, but when it starts invoking God, it's all wrapped up with this whole, I, I don't know. I've asked you to buy Sword and Dove. It's all about the Lord, but it's not. It's not preaching anything. It's not. It's just. It's just music, and um, you know, I think I, I consider that to be an alternative. I guess books fall into a gray area. You know, if you want to make money off your books, you produce something that that may be sharing the word or whatever. Because you can't. I know you, a lot of people. You, you you just are who you are. You're just all about that. So. You know, um, books or appearances, I, 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 you know, there's a fine line there. If it's like this, uh, you're going to want this information. And rather than me talking about it, you're going to have to get my book. It's all about, because God wrote it or something. You know, I mean, you know, you're going to have to use discernment on that one. <clears throat> I did a terrible job of promoting my book. I think I sell three of them a year. <laughs> But I wrote it. I was obedient to the Lord. The Lord knows I'm not a marketeer. I'm not, I'm not good at that, you know. And I'm not jealous over those who are good marketeers. If I wanted to do, um, because we're talking about the Lord, and we're talking about certain kind of deep things here. Uh, no, I guess, I, you know, I could charge you, buddy, because I'm not really a ministry. I exercise free speech here, including politically incorrect for being a Christian type speech. I do that almost on purpose to, to keep myself from falling into the mind control trap. Understand what I'm saying? There's a trap of, 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 of a way to speak, being a real Christian. A way to behave, being a real Christian. And I, and I would just tell you, I, I am a layman or a secular person. I am not a pastor. I'm not a minister. I'm not a priest. Uh, I am, I guess, somewhat of a philosopher, a thinker, a blogger, an audio blogger. I share my thoughts with you. And that's really all it's been. I guess it was kind of like a ministry for a while. And then I, I suppose by and by the Lord just, I, I just had to be kind of get off the field and become more like a speaker. And I will say things. 
that no Christian would say like you know f this or you know the a word or various things and and or or shittyanity or something like that. I need to be free to say that, to not fall into this trap. Yes, there's a huge trap of politically correct thinking and acting and speaking if you're in this category or that category. So I consider myself an audio blogger at this point, and it's, that's why it's called the Zeph Report. Um, it, it, when it first began, there, were, there was prophecy, there was pro- claims of prophecy and prediction and end times and all. It was, it, I started off, I guess, with all the cliches, with all the cliches. And a lot of those things came due and are coming due. And, you know, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for how hard it is for you and me and how hard it's going to be really. I think of my daughter and her children. And, and you know, I think about uh, Italy. It, it was where I believe she will live. And I think about the uh, 25, 26% of the people unemployed there. And um, she doesn't know what to do with her life. She's in school, you know, and, and, and she'll be getting a degree. But, I mean, she's got no interest in the subject that she's studying. And I don't know how the Italians are going to make out. I, I, I hope they don't elect another Mussolini. You know, I, I hope they don't go for another dictator when times get really tough. But that's what the, 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 the ignorant people do is they, you know, people that are like half this country is, or more is, is very ignorant people, you know, who are voting. It's like they vote. They don't even know the issues and they vote. They, they, uh, they, they, they get swayed and conned by, you know, people saying the government will give you everything and pave the way for you. But we need your vote in exchange for that. That's what Obama's been doing. And then he, and then he reneges on all his promises, but then the people keep repeating the same mistake because they're they're ignorant you know they're they're the the the, possibly by design that the masses in this country were made ignorant so that they could do what they do which is rape the people they it doesn't matter you know they're the the politicians you know are not representing the people well i don't expect much better because we're man we're, we're humans we're in a fallen state of course anyway i started out making all those mistakes of I wandered into the end times field just kind of, you know, doing these audio talks and things. And, you know, I was putting out prayer and eventually I had to shut the prayer room because people would be very nasty there. And then I had to, then I saw these nasty uh, reviews on my book and, and different things. And I'm, I'm wondering, where did these people come from? And I realized, oh, I'd stepped into an industry here. I didn't know. I just wandered on the internet. I didn't know there was this pecking order of so-called alternative John the Baptist type Christianity, which was a fraud. And so by and by, I got my education. I went through the Tom Horns and the, the, these other people and those people and the, you know, the, the, in other words, the conspiracy theorists out there, you know, or writing books. I got nothing against people like Horn writing books and all that. It's just when it starts becoming... About after the, about the 25th, you know, he made so many predictions on my show that all were false. And then eventually I just had to say, okay, see you later. Uh, do yourself a favor and don't listen to your inside government sources. You know, <laughs> they're misleading you completely about the alien reveal back in 2004. It's like, where? Where's the alien reveal? The big reveal. <laughs> um, and so there was a whole... So I guess I stumbled into the conspiracy using shittyanity and and then a lot of these people were I don't know it was just weird I walked into this industry and you know wound up on uh, doing coast to coast I had no intention of it it's just because I did this book and that they, they put an ad in the uh, the publisher put an ad in the book and in, in some magazine that eventually they called it was just a, it was just a, there was no striving I I didn't even want to do it at first because I was I thought they would try to rip me a new one, which, of course, they did, you know, and, um, which they don't do to end times Christians with conspiracy theories. They love them all. It's just that we were talking about other things, you know, the, this kind of stuff, you know, the deep things of the, of the fabric of reality, you know, the existence. We were, we we're getting down to the nub, and then they don't want to get to the nub of existence because it means that their foundation is wrong that somehow I'm criticizing my existence as criticizing their foundation 
which they think is, the, and, and really, uh, one of the guests was uh, Barbara Simpson, who's I think on the radio in San Francisco. Anyway, she really had a hard time believing that um, we deserve 9-11, you know. And she's, what did we do? And I'm sitting there thinking, really, Barbara? Are you, so it's like that. You don't believe that we were in deserving of something like a 9-11 or worse. You think that we're just beautiful citizens and just a wonderful, you know, innocent people that don't deserve a comeuppance. That, I mean, we all on this planet deserve a comeuppance just because we are flawed within and we can't help ourselves, you know, and, and, and to, do, to do bad causes, in other words. And when we get together collectively, then we justify endlessly our evil, don't we? So, anyway, I'm, I've digressed, which I, I guess most everything I do is a digression. So, let me digress back to my first digression. So, I started off in the... Uh, with the Zephyr report, and then eventually I found out of the fraud, okay, of this group that that I see fellow brethren sharing all over Facebook. I'm like, really? You didn't get that about this guy? There was another guy there that, let me quote a statement he made, and you, you pass his blog around all over the place. Um, it's okay, quote, it's okay for someone to sell out if they need money, end quote. Right, yeah, he's he's a top, he, yeah, big time Christian guy, big time prophecy guy, big time radio, big time everything. Quote: It's okay for someone to sell out if they need money. End quote. Is there any got any problem with that? Well, using that logic, um, I could just say, well, cool, I'm going to Hollywood. I'm gonna, you know, or whatever. I don't really have any ambition at this point, but if I was a lot younger, I'd say, well, that's good to know, Christian leader, that it's okay for me to sell out if I need money or anything I need, so therefore I'm cool with Jesus, right? You sure are. That's right. In other words, he said, all of the people that sell out for money are good with Jesus, including all the, you know, the, the people that are, the, the Christians that are panting to get on coast to coast and have the access because they're, they're, they're building their lives and careers. So there's no alternative shittyanity anywhere because they're making a living and, you know, and, you know, they're playing the game. And the game is, I hope I or anyone else you know, or whatever, doesn't find out who I really am. So I'll play a game with myself and pretend I'm somebody else who's really cool, really nice, really good, a real big time Christian. And we just, the other stuff, I just, as long as we all collectively ban it from uh, consciousness, then we're fine. And that's hypnosis and mind control, of course. But I mean, in other words, then that's all alternate personalities as well. My alternate personality is this big time Christian. My true identity is um, sludge. No principles. It's okay to sell out because I need money. It's okay to sell out because I need bread. It's okay to sell out because I need love. It's okay to sell out because I don't want to be lonely. It's okay to be, sell out because I need money. It's okay to sell out because I need this. I need that. 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 I need everything. I need everything. I need something. I just can't be alone. Oh, please don't leave me alone. Please, I can't. I'll just kill myself if I have to be alone. I'm so lonely. I need something. I need someone. Need, need, want, 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 desire. Have, have, have. Gotta have, gotta have. Please, please, please. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And that's all about desire, okay? So desire. And that includes the desire for success. Is also a killer. So another axiom of how to live in Christ is to desire Christ and nothing else. To have no desire for the world or for worldly um, achievements. Uh, no, you write your book. If you want to write your book, play your music, write your book. Do, do what you do out of the love of doing it. 
you know, but I mean, and what a, what a burden Jesus has taken off of our shoulders, but put all your desire on him. I desire you, Lord, and then from there flows whatever activity you're doing. So that's why I don't feel a need that, you know, if I do this thing on uh, SoundCloud here, I don't feel a need to really promote it, you know, I just, did that. I think it's important for me to put it out there, but I'm not, that's not my expertise, so I'm just going to not promote anything. And before when I had all this stuff going, you know, little did I realize that a lot of these people that became guests on my show, back to the, this, I don't know, this digression, they all had a desire to have their own show and they all wanted their own thing going and they were just kind of using me to get going with that. And, you know, it, it, you know I was there to be used at that time for their purposes, I suppose. So I had to put an end to that. I mean, that's absolutely... No, the Lord educated me on all this stuff. I stepped into a real hornet's nest and I didn't know it. And they first they, then the next thing I knew, there was like Lisa Ruby articles on me and all kinds of nasty things people are saying. And, and uh, you know, and I had my share. I mean, I, usually it went something like this. No, I'm not going to be your bitch. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to slam you on the net and I'm going to ruin your reputation. Okay, fine, take your best shot. That's how it wound. That's shitty entity on steroids, and that's how it was. Basically, that's Frankie will recall. You know, if I, he probably I don't even think he knows where this. I, I sent it to one person yesterday, and I, I guess I have no follow through anymore. I, I'm almost like uh, the, the Hindu going um, you know, and, and sitting there, and, you know, uh, you know, half naked. You know, the sadhus, right? When you go to uh, but no, most of them are scamming for money, too. They want to look like holy men, so you'll give them a trinket. I, I can't take it anymore. I guess uh, man can't help himself. I, I totally, look, I, I'm not exempt from any of this. I've, I'm showing you on the Zephyr Report, I did the very same thing. I went out there with prophecy, and I, I went out there wanting you to like me, and I wanted you to hear me, and I was, you know, but it, I earnestly was... what had been traumatized and I would just barely heal. I wasn't even healed in 2002. I had no business being on the internet, to, to be honest with you. I had no business being in public. I needed help, you know, and but I got it, you know. And then this is what it's kind of evolved to after uh, learning all these lessons, running into all these people, all of them trying to make a living off ministry. And again, I, I guess I don't have any problem with people doing books or music or things like that it's that's like you know it it's when it it's when it's something that people uh it's one thing to celebrate the lord it's another thing to say you know you need this like this book is now me as a sur is my surrogate preacher it's like me wanting to preach but it's the surrogate okay so you got to get the book because it's going to tell you all the information you need to. You have to have that because Jesus said so. And then you're like this minister guy who's doing the ministry and then promoting, you know, the, the, there's, there's a conflict of interest. Can't you see that? And the same thing, if I said I was a minister and then I said, you have to buy the Sword and Dove album or anything else I did because there's, there's keys of lost wisdom there that you can't get any other way, which of course would be a complete lie. The, the music that we've done is because we're musicians and we're producers and we're um, talented and the Lord wants our gifts shared. And it's just basically, that album is all just, just it's, not even a, it's not even intentionally Christian. It's just basically playing. That's what, that's, if there's any reason it has any utility, it's because it has no ambition. Other than just to be something cool to put on your iPod or whatever and walk around with or something that inspires me. I, this album still inspires me. It's, it's just amazing. I've been, you know, Kelly will attest to the fact that I've been through so many versions and so many mixes. I know the next Sword and Dove 2, when we do that, it's going to be a lot. Uh, but we already have so many uh, new ideas in terms of how we're going to go about recording and different things that it's just going to be, you know, this will be like an early, early, but still I'm, the mix just pops. I'm really happy with where it is. But anyway, it's for music, you know? Just call it music. Do you need it to be with Jesus? No. Okay? No. 
No. Is it something cool to have because it wasn't born of the system or competition and, you know, maybe didn't step into some of those puddles? Yeah. Did we want to try to share it with as many people as possible? Yes, but I realize and I recognize that I have to put myself in check. I can't go begging Hollywood, you know, meaning the fake Christian music industry to take it. They don't, look, they're scared to death of me. And the thing is, is they, they scare me to death too. You know what I mean? So, uh, you, you know, I don't want to wander that close to, you know, look, I can't speak for them. I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure we'd hate each other. I, if we saw each other here uh, in this uh, hotel we're staying at, I'm sure we would stay just as far. I mean, I'd have to worry if they'd tell the chef to poison my food. I don't know. <laughs> Lord told me not to worry, but I'm saying, um, if we were just on the field, we'd just try to kill each other. There, there'd be no um, um, love between that Christian in that in that situation and me at all. We'd be pure hatred, pure repulsion. There'd be no brotherhood. And this war like this is going to go on till the end. Um, I'm all I'm guilty of is is basically exposing the nub of this whole thing meaning everything and everyone and ubiquitous and across the board and showing how it's invisible because it's, the reason it's invisible is because it's in us, it's inside all of us. So therefore it's invisible. It's not this group, it's not the Illuminati, for gosh sakes. It's not the Vatican, for gosh sakes. It's not other secret societies. It's not, you know, Washington, D.C. It's not the Masons. It's basically everything, toto, a toto, you know, toto, e toto. It's everything, all and everything, everything and all. And there's nothing in the world that I can do to change it. And there's no advice I can give you to stay out of it because it's inside you. It's like the disease is in us, man. So we're going to recreate the disease wherever we go. We're going to, we're, we're contagious, we're, we're going to spread that contagion, whether we like it or not. We're going to spread evil. And so what we're trying to do here today is minimize, try to, we can, can't e eradicate it because you get mad. I mean, I, 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 you know, Trish was making noise last night. I was trying to sleep and I yelled at her and, and I apologized today. And I'm sorry I did that, but I woke up like a bear and I, you know, roared. And I hate that. I wish I was perfect. But you know what I'm saying? And that was probably selfish on my part. But, you know, there it is. And, uh, you know, I, uh, the other thing, I smoked a cigar yesterday. A really, it's called, <laughs> they're called Big Kahuna and, in, and made in Maui, you know. And, but uh, they were actually made and hand rolled in Honduras. So there's really nice. And uh, anyway, I took the wrapper off of it and then, Set it in the uh, the little plate using for dash tray. And I, you can't smoke inside this room, so you had to be out. I was on the balcony, you know, watching the ocean, kind of trying to keep more out of the sun yesterday because I got really burned. Isn't that awful? Because I have no ambition. I just lie on the beach. <laughs> and if you took the means away from me to have a hotel, I just I just lie on the beach with them with my sleeping bag. <laughs> anyway, I'm terrible. It's terrible what's happening. This is the true Zen, though. This is what the Zen people really are after. You know, um, someone tell me you, you've you lost all this money. Oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. I, I would love to be that free, you know, but I think I'm giving you a version of myself that's not really true, I think. I just know that when I, whenever I worry, I'm in the wrong spot and I need to stop, un, I need to unworry real fast. And I need to repent to the Lord and apologize for worrying. I mean, that's just, I tried to give that to you a couple of days ago. But this one is, is like, we, we try to minimize, getting back on point, we have to try to minimize the evil. Okay. So the suggestion that I have is, you know, people doing the free YouTubes, I don't know who they are. There's a whole batch of young people that are out there doing, you know, cool stuff. Cool. It's when it becomes a... Uh, it's when you're needed to make money off of it and then you're acting like 
you're also pure. You know, I don't think you can mix, I just want to say this across the board, I don't think you can mix preaching and mo- and getting money from it. I think you have to have another job or means of income or means of existence where you don't need to shake down the congregation. Now, I, I, I've, I'm being a bit hypocritical because I've done that and asked for money and uh, I did use it for, 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 for the, uh, I didn't use it to, 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 to eat. I used it for the uh, cost that was, you know, and every once in a while there'd be, you know, and then we also gave a lot of money to people from that that were, you know, themselves hurting. It was kind of a flow and it was, it was okay. But, you know, I never quite, and now I got it, you know, now I understand. Now I understand. Were some of my messages, was I not as free as I am now because of that? Absolutely. I know for a fact it affected the things I was saying. You know, maybe less than some people, but it, and I wasn't always thinking about it, but I probably, um, it did shape the content a bit. And that's a corruption. That right there. So I confess to that corruption. Did I try to get into the conspiracy thing? Well, no, I was interested in conspiracy. I didn't realize there was an industry to step into. So over the years, that has been shed, like, like shedding my skin. That's been shed from me. And, of course, they don't take me seriously anymore, the conspiracy Christians. And um, uh, and I don't take them seriously. Not that I ever did, but, I mean, I'm not in their... I'm no longer in their venue. They don't publish bad things about me or say anything about me because of the fact that uh, I'm not in their realm. I can do no damage to them. I can't... I, I can, talking about that would be the same thing as talking about Sean Hannity or something. I, I can I could not affect Sean Hannity in any way. I'm no threat to Hannity and I'm I'm no longer a threat to them because I'm not in co- conspiracy shitty Hannity, you know? But it is shitty Hannity. Let's let's face it. It is shitty Hannity. They can't say that word shitty Hannity, you see, and I can, and that's very important. Very important for me to say that that stupid silly phrase shitty entity, even though it's kind of a cuss word, but it's important because they can't say it. They can't say um, the rest of them either. They can't talk about this subject, which is the, 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 the basis of corruption within shitty entity and how it got that way and how to stay out of it. Oh, they cannot stop the donation buttons. No way. They're addicted to it. You know, it's part of the, they make, that's their living, you know. In other words, you start a basis of making a living. So when you start a society on the satanic as God, and you build your churches and everything, it will all be based on quicksand, wouldn't it? To stand on the rock of Jesus means you're you're removed from all that because the desire for success, the desire for money, hey, look, you know, I've got money, thing is, bizarre thing about it is uh, I've never been really about ambitious about it I, it's just the strangest thing I've never really you know I mean I'm okay I'm, no I get we we got to keep doing things and I have things I do that you don't know that you know to 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 keep that going but um you know it, it, it's it's I, no one today is is can you know, completely relaxed, but it's not my focus, you know. If it was my focus, then it would corrupt me. You know, but I just don't worry about it. You know, this this trip was insanely expensive, and I just don't, I can't worry about it. I, I, the Lord will make a way, you know. I don't know why I'm here. I don't even know why I took the trip. I can tell you, though, that uh, when I'm in the ocean... And in this water here, which is my favorite water on earth so far, um, I, I just feel God's presence, and I guess I just needed that. You know, that's all I really needed was just to. Yeah, no, it's not the same as the water in the uh, in L.A. or the water in San Diego. No, this is special. You know, um, and uh, yesterday we were up at the crater up at Haleakala, ten thousand feet up in the crater, and you could see the whole island from up there. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's just praise God, you know. I just, I, I just, I love nature. I love birds. I love animals, and I, you know, and I do love people. I, honestly, I do. I don't like being hurt. 
you know, I don't like hurting others. But the risk of having relationships is, yeah, I'm going to hurt you, you're going to hurt me, but, you know, love has got to, you know, if we could just put the Lord there between us, you know, then there's a good chance we're going to be friends for a long time. Because the Lord would always go with our grievances, because I'm going to piss you off, you're going to piss me off, I'm going to hurt your feelings probably deeply, I could. You know, unknowingly, not wanting to, but, you know, there's... The devil's always getting involved in relationships, trying to get enmity going between everybody. And, 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 you know, I have had to learn to trust. I've had to learn to... And, and I've profited well by that. I've had to learn to trust other people. I've had to learn to, to trust in the Lord. Therefore, I trust you. Because, see, he's got my back and he's guiding me and he's guiding you. So let's put our trust in him so we can be friends. And then... You know, when you do something that that perplexes me, instead of going, you know, instead of all that mano a mano stuff, I'm going to take it to him. And that's the only way we can. And and you know what? And the, the, those people out there that have done the same thing with me and I've done with them. Hey, we're still friends now. We all learned something, didn't we? We learned. Um. And I have a deep desire not to hurt you, to do no harm to anyone. And I know you have a deep desire not to hurt me. And there's, you know, uh, not that we're going to interact, but I mean, the point is, is you don't want to hurt me. You know, I don't want to hurt you. And that's the way it is in your relations and your life and with your friends and whatnot. You don't want to hurt them and they don't want to hurt you. But, you know, when you're walking the walk, this walk, this sort of the walk in Christ, you know, there's always this, Spirits being you're being tested, your faith is being tested. So your relationships, with someone's always going to throw a mon monkey wrench in there. I can't even tell you all the time on, online and and, and you know when, when we had the show and this and that, all the rumor mill behind my back was going on, and and people were just becoming friends so they could take down the the lamb cafe. Remember we had that? Uh, what was that? That was like a oh gosh, it was like before Facebook. You had that sort of thing, a chat room, whatever. And there were groups of people conspiring to take it down. And I was like, but that idea I had was just born out of the, the, the need to bring people together and to, and, to, and to share. It wasn't supposed to be like a, a war zone. And yet there were people that actually would become your friend and act like you for a while and then try to turn it into chaos. And they got great pleasure out of that. And we... You know, I'm friends with a guy now that, you know, we weren't friends back then because it was like there's this woman putting enmity between us, spreading false rumors between us and preventing our friendship. And I was like, I can't believe that. I, that's just absolutely unbelievable that that actually happened. And, and so years went by um, without having that fellowship, friendship, collaboration, whatever. And I'm like, what the hell? I... Th it's just unreal. We've got to be very careful in our relationships because look what happens. The minute you get to be friends with somebody, someone throws a wrench in it. And before you know it, you're at odds with each other. Only thing we can do, folks, is we've got to take it to the Lord. We've got to have him at the center. And when there's like, oh, is so-and-so okay? I'm going to take that to the Lord. I'm not going to... So-and-so just said something awful to me and I really feel bad. No, I'm going to take it to the Lord. I'm not going to hurt about it. I'm going to re recognize that I'm part of the equation in my perception of the event that occurred or didn't occur. A lot of times these things don't occur. It's just in your mind that the other guy is conspiring against you. And so then you're going to come back at him before he can get you, right? Okay, that kind of crap, you know? And then and then the alternative to that is being alone totally. And it's like, no, I've, I'm going to risk my heart in friendships. I'm going to risk my heart. You know what I mean? I, I can't be like that where I close my heart off and say, that's it, no more, I'm, I'm not open for business. There's going to be no relationships in the future. Can't do that. I'm going to have to take the risk that, yes, if you're open, if your heart is open, then, you know, you could be hurt. And I spent a lot of time closed up because I kept getting hurt by people that said they were Christians. This was... Uh, for for the first part of t of the new century, from around 2000 to about 2010, I mean, that 10 years, 
Um, I was set up, betrayed, lied. All this stuff happened in, in shitty entity, you know, and I just finally understood it in the end. I finally understood in the end that man is basically like that. You know, I, I kept expecting people to be better or to not be play this duplicitous game of becoming your friend so they can stab you in the back. I just, you know, and then, and then did they stab you in the back? Or maybe it's my perception of what I thought happened, which may, may me not happen. But in my mind, I'm thinking that. And so therefore, um, there's problems. So this Christian thing was like, in a way, my learning or like a university, because I'd stepped into a place, into an industry, and it gave me a lot of insight as to the way the world works because I see the way people are behaving and some people are conforming to this group and conforming to that group and being one of them and being one of them in hopes that they can better their lot in somehow making a living in the industry of uh, exportation of shitty entity from them, the mind of their special selves. So then from that I realized, oh my gosh, we're all trying to be special. We're all trying to be too special. We all think we have a certain gift that nobody else has. And that very idea is something Jesus would hate. Oh my God, look what we've all done as, quote, leaders. But in, in actuality, the bottom line is they think they're leaders. But we're not. They think they're leaders and they have a responsibility in their mission. God's giving, as people said to me now, God's given you a big ministry. You know, hundreds of thousands of people, so you're going to have to, uh, it's a big responsibility. I'm saying, and the Lord was correcting that later, saying, you don't have a ministry. It's not, it's not a ministry. You know, other people have called it that. It was supposed to just be the Zeph Report, a show. Can't we just exist together and not call it a ministry? Can't we just exist and just be in, in the in the field of the Lord and God's presence and, and just kind of go from there and just try not to throw uh, mud at each other in the sandbox since we're all babies? Can't we just be like children? Why do we have to lord it over the other guy? Or, or shake the other guy down, you know, shake the congregation down for money. The congregate, why do we need a congregation in the first place? You know, don't we have a congregation in heaven? Don't we have a, a bilocational or multilocational congregation thing going on? So we're not alone. You put me in solitary confinement, I wouldn't be alone. And I wouldn't feel lonely, I'll bet. I, I don't know, I'm not there now. I wouldn't like it. Absolutely, I'd hate it. But I would have to ad adapt by, by speaking to the Lord and the angels and whoever else is in the spiritual realm because, uh, you know, it would be intolerable physically to be in, under that kind of punishment. Richard Wormbrand talked about that sort of thing. He had fellowship with his fellow inmates. By clanging chains together, they, they made music. I mean, it's a horrible what he went through. It's just terrible. But, uh, okay, it looks like I'm going to have to uh, log in here. I wonder if I can... Okay, I got you. Uh, look, I guess I got to go because I'm now on uh, E here. And uh, God bless you, each and every one of you. I, uh, I can't solve these problems. So I told you today we weren't going to solve it. And I suppose the correct answer is we're not solving it. Because the problem that exists out there is within us. It's as much in Barack Obama as it is in Zeph Daniel. So I've criticized him, for example, and I've just got to say a couple words about this, about the political realm. I've criticized Barack Obama, and I compared him to, you know, the man of sin and, the, you know, the various kings in Daniel and the, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the beast in the book of Revelation and... And I, and I told you at this point, this my take on it. It doesn't measure up. And but we looked at it very carefully for a long time. I was willing to say he's he's the guy. There's this big AC controversy going on. So 
and uh, yesterday I said I was happy that I didn't, you know, that I kept my powder dry on that, but I just, you know, I had a check in my spirit on it, so I couldn't, I couldn't just say, yep, he's the guy, even though I know I have friends who, who say the opposite, who say he is the guy, and I, I hope that doesn't, you know, pray that doesn't get, look, you can believe in the rapture, or Brock, or Baba's AC, or Prince Charles, that never blocked any friendship with me, I just don't agree with you. Not agreeing doesn't mean we have to be enemies. <laughs> I mean, you know, what's the end? What Support your theory so you can be, you know, I, I, what does it matter? But for me, okay, for me, um, he, he may be satanic, he may be Masonic, he may be, I don't know, he may be all those things, but uh, I, I just really need the Lord to show me about what he means with the book of Revelation now, because the Barack Obama situation, considering him as, I know it says in Luke, you know, I saw Satan fall like lightning, and and um, uh, um, lightning is Barack, and 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 uh, uh, from the sky above is Obama, and then they put an O in front of it as a, as a as a as a part of the uh, noun of of a surname, like Yahoshua or whatever. Um, to me, that's just a coincidence. I mean, it's, it's not not even really a coincidence. It's just Okay, so is you know uh, I don't believe that Jesus meant that the name when he said lightning fall from heaven I saw Satan as Barack Obama I don't believe that Jesus meant that there would be a guy named Barack Obama I think he was just saying lightning falling from the sky above is what he was saying this idea of saying that the the word is Barack Obama what are the odds on that is just too much of a stretch for me to believe. I'm sorry, but that just stri that that goes to almost like the National Enquirer level of of belief. I I don't receive that as meaning because it wasn't Jesus' intention. There's not a hidden code there that Jesus used those words of I saw Satan fall from lightning, and that really meant it didn't mean literally. It meant he meant the name Barack Obama, meaning a future name that could be found in the Bible. I think that's just ridiculous. Okay? Sorry. But I, you know, and to you people that have had that, it, it, I saw that on YouTube. And I went, wow, that's interesting. Just like I, I see a lot of factoids like that that, that uh, could be conspiratorial. But it's, 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 just, it's just ridiculous. It, it, I mean, that, even for me, who, who've said a lot of things and explored a lot of areas of consciousness and, and uh, conspiracy and, and, and uh, the way the world is, and, and my conclusion in the end of the day is really simple. Look, the world is the way it is because we inherently are broken. Man, that is. That's why you have a lot of people that want to eradicate humanity from the earth because it's like, Nothing else is as corrupt as we are, it seems. Or corrupt at all, but we are. And so we all recognize we're corrupt. Even the atheists that want to kill all mankind because the man's a virus on the earth that should be eradicated. Yeah, you know, sure, sure. I, I understand. I Actually, that's fairly close to the truth. They don't like the corruption they see in humanity and they want to kill us all, including themselves. You know, actually... I understand that perfectly. That makes perfect sense that people would arrive at that conclusion. Absolutely. I've arrived at that conclusion myself. My daughter and I were just talking about that. You know, um, you know, she, she, you know, from time to time said she just wishes she would die and she just can't understand why, she, you know, and she didn't want to bring children into this world because they would just suffer and it's just not worth, you know. And as she's getting older, that's changing a bit. But she had that nihilistic, uh, you know, 20-year-old thing going. And um, now she's 22. And, and so now she's, she's, you can see already there's been a change from that. And I suppose when I was that age, you know, uh, I went through the same thing, uh, especially in late teens. But at the end of the day, it's humanity. Look, let's just be honest for once. You know, or or honester, more honest. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's us. We are the problem. The solution is Jesus. 
and 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 uh, and that and that path. But it's the corruptions in us. It's in our DNA. It's in our consciousness. It we are the ones who kill other people. We are the ones, you know. And I said I wouldn't be the ones who put the nails and whatnot into Jesus. Well, maybe I technically wouldn't do it, but I'm part of something that would. In other words, I can't exempt myself. It's in all of us now. Some are meant for the Lord and some are meant for, for the devil, obviously. There's different creations here in that way of, of, of humanity. You know, there's, there's sheep and goats and whatnot. I, I see that, you know, I see that too. But all of us have corruption, regardless of who we belong to at the end of the day. As Bob Dylan said, you're going to serve somebody. And, 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 and Zeph Daniel says to Bob Dylan, yeah, you're going to serve the one you're meant to serve. Checkmate, Bobby. It's not everything is everything and everybody's the same. It's just, it's just, I wish, you know what? I wish it were that way. But it's not. And there's nothing I can do about it. There's wheat and there's tares. There's light and there's dark. There's these people and those people. There's us and them and there really is. It's not just a projection of a damaged consciousness that would project us and them mentality. It is an us and them, and um, and it has, oh, and, and this is very important, and it has nothing to do with um, a person's decisions. You know, it's organic. It's, it's in the DNA. It has, you know, the, the, that some would do evil, some would put the nails in Jesus' hands, and some wouldn't. It's in the DNA. It's already written. And there's just nothing I can do about it. You know, I, I, the church I know hates that. Of course, of course they would. Because they want you all to think you're all the same so you can get as much money as power as possible. But, um, you know, given that, I would predict that humanity would create wars, poverty, pain and suffering, and even corruption of the very genome and destruction of anything that humans would touch. Uh, through their sciences and through trying to he through always through trying to help, but I, I I see that you know and then I also see that there's airplanes that fly and there's boats that float and and uh, the people that ride magnificent waves and and ride magnificently I see a good too but um, I, I definitely see that the seed uh, is you know there could be a demon seed or a god seed and they both can be in the same womb you know. Uh, you could have Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel come from the same womb. And uh, so that split, I think Jonathan Kleck explained it the best. No, we don't agree on the Barack thing, but we're good friends. He uh, had that brilliant thing about the DNA. And it just all made sense to me. It just, I really just, a light went off. And, uh, and it just was uh, a, an amazing understanding that, it, because later on, I understood that my health issues that I've had were DNA, you know, and that, that um, things I was doing, in other words, things I was eating and things I was drinking and, and, and things I was in my general health condition, all was determined by my DNA. And once that was changed, you know, the things I'm taking in, uh, change of lifestyle that was addressing those issues, then my thoughts, moods, depressions, uh, uh, ups and downs, all kinds of things like that went away when the genetic anomaly of malady that I had was addressed through a change of diet, actually. And then I realized, hey, where's the ups and downs? Where's... You mean all this stuff and all the angst and tears and everything was, wasn't was me just being weak? It was as much in the DNA as it was in my behavior and mood. Oh my God. So therefore, physically determines each person. So a lot of people, they're just total assholes. They're just, they might have a genetic deficiency in some area. It could be a matter of diet or something like that. Uh, yes, it could be just as much a matter of something physical that's affecting them and making them into uh, bad 
bad people. You know what I mean? So, so that's a really interesting thing, you know? And that's another reason to pray to the Lord because the Lord will give you, I mean, ultimately he gave me, I had to completely give up trying to do my own thing. I had to just say, Lord, what, what do I eat today? Where do I go? I mean, I, I can even, I've absolutely got to the point of complete, total addiction and helplessness. Addiction to him, that is, for a solution. Because I would keep asking him every day. I'd say, I think I should do that because the mind control is there. So how many of you think, you know, I should, um, you know, when you think of health, you think of eating vegetables and eating lovely fruits. And there's a lot of beautiful fruit and vegetables on the island here. So you want to eat all the beautiful f fruit and vegetables and eat papayas and, and go raw and and uh, drink, uh, you know, non-caffeinated uh, herbal teas and, and uh, you know, start uh, doing lots of walking and running or walking and, and meditation. And you equate all those things with good health, right? That is all 100% mind control and Madison Avenue programming. Because it's, you know, the world wants us to get off meat and off, off all that stuff. And they have a whole thing. There's a menu here in one of the restaurants in this um, little resort here we are. Um, it, it, um, it's like one page is like they have, a, uh, they have an area for a macrobiotic menu at dinner, a vegan me menu at dinner. And then it's like the whole page now dedicated to whether you're macrobiotic, you're vegan, you're on some, and I realize macrobiotic is mind control because I was on that and I felt better for a while, but it was all um, ridiculous. And uh, the uh, vegan, I did that for a while, but I was really more, more macro because I was very, macro but just means it's like vegetarian, but it's it, it it's and it's non dairy, so it's vegan, but it's rice oriented. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of rice involved, and they also will eat fish in the macrobiotic diet, but it's with an emphasis on vegetarianism, uh, rice based, and it's it's a lot of cooked food as well. And there's a whole subculture, but it's all it's all it's all arbitrary. It's all ridiculous. And I did it. I, I'm an experiencer of it. And then I did vegan for a while, and then I tried to do raw. Raw never worked for me. I couldn't seem to make a go of it. I thought, okay, now how many of you think that if you eat a lot of fat, you know, fatty dietary fat, animal fat, you know, fat from, like, say, macadamia nuts or cream cheese or something like that, how many of you think that, okay, that would be a way to really, really blow your diet and get really fat? Right? And uh, they'd be really bad for you. You'd have terrible cholesterol. And, uh, and that, you know, meats like, say, um, fatty meats like bacon, fatty things like eggs, eggs, bacon, sausage, um, uh, macadamia nuts, cream cheese, uh, things like that. How many of you would think that that would be just, you, you, you would blow up to be about, 500 pounds, and you'd, 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 you'd have a heart attack right off the bat. You know, I mean, that, if you saw a plate with, like, five strips of bacon, some scrambled eggs, um, uh, with cheese melted all over it, or whatever, a couple of sausage, a big, you know, sort of ounce of cream cheese, if you saw that on a breakfast plate, you'd think, oh, that's a heart attack waiting to happen. Or or a steak, a really fatty, marbly, you know, um, steak with eggs and and you know and and whatever I mentioned. You would think, oh, that's 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 terrible. Turns out that the the that for people that are, um, in my case, uh, which was hypoglycemic, I had my blood sugar tested when I was a child, and I and all my moods, everything that was happening was because I was hypoglycemic and I didn't realize it. And, um, you know, and I was like a lot of kids, always eating a lot of sugar and a lot of carbs. And, uh, and this was actually leading into like a pre-diabetic condition as well because I was just up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and, and moods and 
mood swings and, and uh, oh, just having a horrible time. It gets worse as you get older. Well, okay, eating just the way I described, which is very uncool. They, they, they think you're so uncool at a restaurant if you order something like that. Because what's cool is when someone orders this vegan thingy, thingy, thingy that the chef cooks up. And they're all getting into, you know, how they can do these. And, and look, most of the people I know that went vegan, vegetarian, all that, they died already. I mean, they're, they died early, right? They didn't have the B vitamin backup. But it doesn't matter. I'm not talking about a diet for everybody. I'm saying, for me personally, because of the hypoglycemic condition, uh, the ketogenic or, or, you know, fat and protein diet actually saved my life. But you wouldn't think that. It, it's, there's, it's absolutely counterintuitive. No. And so what I would do is I would keep thinking, no, I really need to eat like this. I need to start eating vegetarian. This is ridiculous. I got to stop this. <laughs> this is, I know I don't eat a lot of meat. No, no. What happened is actually my appetite went down, down, down to where I, I would eat less and less and less, you know, because I was getting the fuel that my, my body wanted for whatever reason. I'm more like, you know, I hate to put it this way, but I'm more like the wolf than the, um, than the gorilla. You know, the gorilla is just basically very strong and eats all these... I, I know there's people out there that are very strong and they eat nothing but veggies. But the vegetarians I've known, and I'm being honest with you, they died early and they got sick eventually before, before, their, old age, before their old age. Um, the guy that lived longest, the guy that lived to be 95, eating the way that I'm talking about, he... Uh, this guy wrote the a book called The Dream, and he he drank every day, and and um, uh, he he uh, he lived to be ninety five and was uh, slim and fit right up to the day of his death. And he was no, I can't explain it. But with me, it was like this: whenever I would have sugar, my insulin would spike, and I would eat everything in sight, or I just or I would have, or I'd be low energy where I couldn't do anything. And that was just a horrible state to be in. And I asked the Lord for years. And I tried the Atkins thing before, and I, I never really made a go of it. And I, and I don't even like Atkins because I don't like all these products and all this, you know, fake stuff they sell. To me, you ought to eat real food. But, I mean, I'm just giving you an insight as to that the issue I had was genetic. I got it from my father. Guess who else has it? My daughter has the exact same metabolic issue. It... For me, my problems in life, including my performance in school, say a lot. My whole life was affected by my metabolism through my DNA, which I didn't know how to address because the doctor nobody knew how to deal with it. You know, putting a person on a macrobiotic diet if you have a hypoglycemic issue is suicide. Absolutely. You know, well, you could get whole grain. You could eat quinoa. That's the big thing now with vegetarians. Quinoa. Yeah, it's fine. Quinoa. It's just another grain. I mean, come on. So, um, that just goes to show you that, and, and, and uh, what I tried, like the, the Atkins or the, the other thing was diet. The Lord said, I forbid you to go follow any man's diet. You just eat what I give you, you know? And so he would give me things that were just ridiculous. And then I sort of, came up with my own plan for myself and uh, which you, you would call a, a, a very restricted sugar, low carb, you know, situation with lots of fat emphasized uh, as opposed to lots of protein. Lots of protein um, didn't work for me. It hurt my kidneys, everything else. So it's like, it's, it's, it's like these things are in balance. I don't, it's not a lot of food, but the amount of fuel that I consume sustains me throughout the day like other people that will eat like I know people that eat nothing but potato chips and 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 cheesecake and things like that uh, they are and and they're skinny and I don't know how they do it but they don't uh whatever they use as fuel seems to sustain them whereas with me I, I was always dragging so I uh, that that problem in my life was corrected and I don't drag and it's been now you know around going around three months or so and um I'm just very grateful. I, I don't know how I... The problem was I had tried to follow man. Like, 
the Atkins program or the Peskin protocol or the, uh, what is it called, the South Beach thing. Or I've tried all these diets and it's, none of them ever worked. But um, I still had, a, had an insulin problem, and that had to be addressed. And so it was just, it was just I, I basically had to become a chemist. And in being a chemist with my own body, you know, to find out what makes it tick. And, I, and I'm still, you know, collecting data, because mine's not the same as yours. And I, I don't say no carb. There has to be carbs, you know. Usually what really helps is every once in a while I'll have a wedge of orange or a, uh, a quarter apple, you know, to, to kick things into, into another gear, but... It's it. Look, whatever I've done, it wouldn't work for you, you know. Um, but it does work with my daughter somewhat because she understands um, her metabolic issue that she inherited it from me, and I got it from my father. And uh, it was, I think, on my father's side of the family, this gene of of depression and suicide even uh, had gone generation after generation, and it all was linked to a metabolic issue called hypoglycemia or a glycemic issue. All of it was linked to metabolism. Think of what the outcome would have been had that been corrected earlier on. Well, I mean, yeah, I might not be here, but, but people would have lived happier lives. And, and, and how hard was it for me to be consistent in whatever God was trying to show me because I asked for a cure? I had to ask every day I tried to rebel because of the mind control, saying that, oh no, this is what's healthy over here, not that over there. See what I mean? So that every day there's this like, well, yeah, but shouldn't you really be like a vegetarian? It, so somehow I realized that the program in our culture, and I, I, I envision a day where if you eat meat, you're going to be looked down upon and scorned in a restaurant. No, but I, I love... Uh, the bee, bee vibe. I love tearing flesh with my teeth. <laughs> Not human. <laughs> no, but but yeah, a steak, you know, uh, a uh, ribs, uh, whatever, you know. That's it's. But I mean, I don't love it like I used to love. I used to just want food. I'd think about food. Now it's kind of like nah. It's yeah, I eat really slow. Things have changed. I used to just have to eat everything on the table because my metabolism was off the charts and was hurting me and it made me feel bad. And, and, I'm, and now I have consistency. At least when bad things are happening, I'll, I can wait 10 seconds before I you know, start crying or whatever. You know, in other words, I can assess my... I got room, a little bit of room to, 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 to breathe. Is it the end all and be all? No, it's just along the process of healing and following the Lord. You know, this is just one more thing, you know, it's another kind of a miracle. But make no mistake, it's the Lord that actually keeps me on track, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it, because I'm the kind of person that, if you tell me not to have something, I'm doing it. If you try to set up a rule over here, it's broken. If you try to set up a, a following a diet, ha <laughs> ha, that's a joke, it's broken within four day, three days, not, not even three days, two days, sometimes one day. How about a fast? Uh, usually... If, I, if there's no rule about it or not someone else's book, I can do it. But as long as there's, if it's a rule, oh no. See, it's not going to work. So that I'll pass on. Anyway, the, the gist of the show, the real show that was going, and, and, and if it helps you, my plight, fine. It was metabolic. All the trouble between my dad and my, me, you know, in terms of, you know, moods and communication and up and down. And he was so depressed and so out of it a lot of the time. He was not really available, you know what I mean? And I think his whole problem was metabolism. I really see it now. And I've got the same problem he had and my daughter's got the same problem that he had as well. And he got it from either his mother or father. I'm not sure which. But um, it was a gene that's been running through, you know, our bloodline that has affected decisions, mood, abuse, obviously, um, performance, lifestyle, manner of speaking, and a lot of things, all linked back to a defective gene. 
rather than someone just being evil. And that's what I was trying to explain to you earlier, how it's our behavior isn't uh, in spite of our genes. It's because of our genes. It all links back to that. So we really need help. We need help a lot more than we even realize. And the only one that can help us is the Lord. And, and you know, we all have to become like almost scientists. And, it, you know, half the battle is, you know, um, we trust the Lord for what we should eat, what we should wear, but half the battle is what you eat and what you wear because if you're eating the wrong things and even wearing the wrong things, uh, it can interact with you in a genetic way that's not right. And, and at the same time, if there's some guru out there with a rule, remember, everyone's genetic structure is different. And what may work for one won't work for the other. And uh, all the maladies of man can be, you know, including war, poverty, evil, can be linked back to genes. You actually can link it beyond behavior and, you know, beyond your feeling guilty about yourselves, you know, and ourselves. You know, it can go, it, it, it can simply be explained by um, genes. A lot of time, the capacity to feel guilt or not guilt comes from, is a genetic thing as well. So being good and striving for goodness and improving one's character is only doable if there's... Um, some sort of genetic change, and if that can happen through prayer of the spirit, which I believe it can, then a person can. That, that that's the changes that we we see, and then why wouldn't that extend to what you'll eat, what you'll wear, where you'll live, what kind of place you'll live in? You know, maybe influence why I'm, I'm wandering around on the island of Maui. You know, it, 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 it's all about um, fixing that which is damaged, and then regenerating that which is damaged and then ultimately glorifying that which was damaged and then made whole and made one and then and then uh, and then incorporating that whole thing into you know the holy light of of Yahweh and all and all of it being one it's just a marvelous story of regeneration and um I don't know I suppose everyone's going to fight and call it the Illuminati and the Vatican and whatever but it's just really me and it's just really you so with that knowledge in mind you know all the more i pray right now lord that you just tell everybody that they just need to come to you to fix this in jesus name amen and we'll see you next time